Now, why did they define, why do you think they have in the definition, in this equation, or why do they have um, ln? In other words, why, can, why couldn't they have written the equation like this, k times omega? That would still work because the more number of ways you could configure a system, the entropy would increase. Why did they decide to make it a logarithmic scale and not a straight up uh, scale? So in other words, if it, if it had been like this, I would have said the entropy of a royal flush is four ways of getting a royal flush, so it's just 4K. But the entropy of a four of a kind is 624K. Whereas they did it LN of 624 and then LN of four. Is something in nature forcing entropy to be logarithmic? Or is it kind of up to us? Why is entropy a logarithmic function. Boy, this goes to information theory, right? Uh, so entropy kind of connects the idea of statistics and probability and information theory, right? Actually, I was just watching, I'm um, uh, in the middle of a documentary. I'm watching a um, documentary on George Bullion, I think his name is. George, Bu George Bullion. He lived in the 1800s. He's one of the founders of information theory. And we have if, uh, Bullion algebra based, uh, is based on him. And of course, computer information, those of you who are uh, computer scientist, information theory is the foundation of computer science, you know. Uh, so entropy is connected to that. It's kind of all just one, one big mess. <laughs> right, so Boolean, who is another father of information theory. Uh, there's another guy. Uh, founders of information theory. Oh yeah, Cloud Shannon, yeah, he's a big, uh, mostly closely associated with the work of the American electrical engineer, Cloud Shannon, in the 20th century, in the mid 20th century. So he's more recent than Boolean. Information theory is chiefly of interest to communication engineers, though some of the concepts have been adopted and used in such fields as psychology and linguistics. So, it gives you the whole history of, oh, you like Boolean, uh, Daniel? Have you taken Boolean algebra as a computer science major? You probably have to take that somewhere, right? Yeah, well, I mean, actually Boolean algebra tends to be just a small part of like other stuff, especially when we do stuff with, um, with like digital circuits. There's like a- Yes. Yes. You, you see how I'm looking at an article here on hi history of information theory? But uh, they're talking about Cloud Shannon. But then already, right from the first paragraph, entropy, they're mentioning right. information entropy. So the information entropy, often just entropy, is a basic quantity in information theory associated to any random variable, which can be interpreted as the average level of information surprise or uncertainty. You see? Uh, the, then you have the channel capacity, noise channel coding theory. And, Da -da 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 -da. They're going to early communication. Okay, that's kind of where the logarithmic comes in because of it of the connection of entropy to information theory. Uh, why do we need logs there? Uh, you know how? Could, can you explain why you need logs in information theory? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. Daniel, have you taken that? Um, huh? I mean, I don't know that much yet, but I wouldn't see. Entropy and statistical mechanics. Uh, Mila, you might know if you've taken PCHEM. Yes. Uh, do you know why there's a bunch of logs in statistical mechanics? Um, well, usually when I would do um, 
statistics, whenever you add a log to something, it would um, make it easier for the graphs. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, instead of having to deal with like exponential graphs, when you take the log of something, sometimes it makes it into a straight line. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it makes it into a straight line. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Let's see here. It says gives free energy. This gives entropy from statistical mechanics. You probably learned about canonical states and all that. Yeah, I learned about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's the connection of information theory. Uh, the simple answer that I could give, see it says here, entropy is a type of information and the easiest way to measure information is in bits and bytes rather than by the total number of possible states they can represent. So why is there an entropy? Let's see if, if we get an easy answer. Uh, sometimes you get good answers from Quora, like a short, quick answer. Uh, it's because entropy is a type of information. Entropy is the amount of information contained in the microscopic state of a system, which is missing in the approximate representation of that system using macroscopic thermodynamics. The basic unit of information is the bit, which represents two possible states. If you have n bits, oh, okay, okay, we'll get into it now, hold on. Uh, the basic unit of information is the bit which represents two possible states. If you have n bits, then that information represents two to the n possible states. For example, a byte is eight bytes, eight bits. Therefore, the number of states is represented two to the eighth, which is 256. That means that a byte can store any number between zero and 255. If you are given the total number of states, then you just take the log of that number to get the amount of information measured in bits. Uh, you guys see what's happening? So basic unit of information is the bit, on, off, zero, one, right? And all of computer technology is based on that. So then one byte is eight bits. How many information can it store? Two to the eighth. So I don't say what's the, entropy of this is 256, I just say it's eight. You see? Uh, so the entropy of the, entropy of this guy will be 250, the entropy of this will be, L well, they did it at LN. They didn't even do log base two. In computer technology, they probably do log base two, but in physics, we do LN. So entropy is defined as the log of the number of total microscopic states corresponding to a particular macro state. Okay, so then it says, but then you might ask, why is information measured with logarithms instead of just by the total number of states? Which that was my question, right? Mostly because it makes it additive. Ah, here's another reason why. It's true that if you really want to, you could choose to measure information by the total number of states, usually called the multiplicity, instead of by the log of the multiplicity. But then it would be multiplicative instead of additive. If you have 10 bits and then you obtain another 10 bits of information, then you have 20 bits. Do you see what's happening? Saying the same thing in terms of multiplicity, if you have two to the 10th states and then you add another 10 to the 24 states, then you multiply them, you get that many possible states, which is true to the power of 20 when they are combined. Multiplicity is multiplicative instead of additive, which means that the numbers you need in order to keep track of it gets very large very quickly, which is, Milo, that's what you were saying, right? So it gets very large and plus it becomes multiplicative, you see? So therefore, we want entropy to be additive. We want to be able to say, oh, this uh, thing had an entropy of five joules and I added some uncertainty to it of three joules. So then it's eight joules per Kelvin, you see? So it says the only funny thing you might notice here is that in computer science, information is usually based in units defined by the log base two. 
Whereas in physics, entropy is usually measured in units defined by the natural log. Oh, that's what I was saying earlier. This is purely a difference of convention. Okay, so you see, it's not necessary that one be log base to the other be ln. Physicists like to use natural logs because they're used to using them for many other things and they have nice mathematical properties. But there's a good case to be made that bit is the more natural unit to measure entropy in. I wouldn't be too surprised if in the future it becomes more common for physicists to switch to this convention. In some areas of physics, such as quantum computing and quantum information, this new convention has already started being adopted. So you see, we could just as easily say entropy is log base two of the number of ways of arranging things. Does that help? Daniel, you like that? Yeah. You get why if we do the log now? Yeah. yeah. There's several reasons, right? One is to make the number smaller than to make the concept additive instead of multiplicative, right? Mm -hmm. I would probably add one other, maybe it's my own reason, uh, but it's kind of like a nice reason. If a state only has one way of achieving that, what's the log of one? The, what's the properties of logs? Right, in other words, if I had a hand in poker, that there was only one way of getting that hand, right? Uh, oh, imagine a pair of dice. If I say somebody rolled a pair of dice and they got two, how many ways of getting a two are there? Uh, for a pair of dice. How many ways of getting a two are there? Well, each dice has to be one, right? So only one way. So what's the entropy of that state? If it wasn't a log if it was just simply the product of k and the number of ways, the entropy of that state would be k times one. Oh, I don't like that. It's better to say the entropy of the dice two is k ln one. There's one way of obtaining the two. So then that means the entropy of getting a two is zero. There is no uncertainty. If somebody tells me they're holding a two in their hand, I can for sure tell them with no unequivocal terms, I can say you have one and a one, you see? So the information, uh, the information contained in the two is so low, there's only one way of getting a two that I am 100% certain. You guys get it? And the entropy of that state is therefore a zero because it's K, ln of one, which is k ln of, it just becomes zero basically. How about if the person says, oh, I'm, I have uh, 12 in my hand. What's the entropy of that state? Is there any information missing? No, right? So the entropy of a 12 would be what? Because they have to have a six and a six. So the entropy of that state is zero again, you see? So when something is for sure, there's only one way of having that happen, uh, then the entropy of that is zero. Can you think, anyone can think of another example, something in the event where you know for sure there's only one way of achieving that. And the entropy of that state would be zero. Other than getting a two on a pair of hands.
I was going to say maybe like a coin flip. Okay. And uh, in other words, give me the, a certain macro state who only has, which only has one possible way of obtaining that. So you said a coin flip in which what? Or maybe you guess we could say like uh, how many ways are there of getting two heads from two coin flips? Actually, no. Oh, let's see. Okay, how about something like this? Uh, if a student tells you that their GPA in the spring semester was 4.0, that's the macro state. Yeah. How many ways of getting a 4.0 are there? There's only one way. Yeah, because uh, colleges don't give A pluses, uh, right? It's not like high school where if you take an AP course, you get a 5.0 on that. So then I will know for sure, without a doubt, that they got an A in every single class. Or maybe W in, in one of the classes, <laughs> All right? But let's forget the W now. Uh, every class that they ended, they got an A, if their GPA is 4.0. There's only one way to do it. 